Hello, 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 and welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the Rap and Scrap channel. So I'm glad you're here with me. So today, my friends, what we are doing, are we are in the craft room, and I'll show a picture and pan around. This place is just filled with gifts because I've been shopping. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, it's a mess. I'm in the craft room, and I've got gifts everywhere that I need to wrap. So, friend, since you're here, you're going to help wrap them with me. Let's do I've been this. shopping all over the place, and that brought me to today, being that it's Vlogmas Day 8. I thought I would come in and share with you guys some of my favorite places to shop and what I'm looking for and what order I shop in, okay? So this is just, you know, Monique Chante's way. It's not the way you have to do it, but I thought I would just share it. Um, we are partaking in some Grand Mar today, some Grand Marier. We have it here. I am still under the weather a bit. I am feel, starting to feel better though. I feel myself coming back alive, okay? I'm starting to feel like I'm back alive a little bit. So. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Um, nice fresh shower. I'm ready to work. So let's get this party started and you will help me wrap these gifts. I mean, you here, you here. So you might as well help a sister out. I mean, I, I don't see no reason why you can't help out. Okay. Mm. That's good. That's good. So here's what we're gonna do. I like to start with the smallest and work my way up to big, but they're just sitting on the table, so I'm just gonna grab whatever it is. And wrap it away. I can't show you what I'm wrapping because, again, my kids watch my videos and other people that I bought gifts for wrap my videos, and they're nosy and they'll know. All right, so my five favorite places to shop, all right, and in this order. If we had one that was good, it would be a swap meet. Yep, a swap meet. Do not knock it until you try it, please. Now, the reason why I say that is because of this. A swap meet, you can find pretty much anything. Anything. And sometimes you find things you were looking for that you didn't know you were looking for. So I think swap meets are great places to start because if someone's selling like a palette from Macy's or Nordstrom's or Sears or whatever, you can find some really good stuff. I, so I sometimes, um, unless it's brand new, unless it's a brand new palette, I'll steer away from electronics just because I don't want the hassle of if it works or it doesn't work. But in most cases, if you go to a good swap meet, they have places where you can try it out, okay? So um, in my family, we're not funny like that. We don't care if you buy something from the swap meet. It doesn't matter to us. You know, in most cases, it is what it is. Um, we don't mind. So, I know some people might think, oh, that's tacky. I think it really depends on your family dynamic and what is considered acceptable in your family. Like in our family, it's okay if you go to the thrift store, yard sale, swap meet, estate sale, all that jazz. We, we honestly don't care. Okay? So, that's just my family. And... Um, it's always been that way. But I like to start there first. We don't have one out here that I deem uh, good enough to do that with. So the next place I would start would be the Burlington's, the Ross, TJ Maxx, places like that. Okay. I would go there and see what I can find. And then from there, I would head over to the Big Lots, the Walmarts, and... Um, those are a little category in their own right. I think they're kind of kind of um, corralled together when it comes to pricing. I think their pricing is both pretty uh, standard across the bar there. So after I would go to Big Lots and to Walmart, you notice I haven't said anything about online yet. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Uh, I do that first. Then from there, I start to look at my map because that I would shop at are not here around me. They're like in other areas. So the next place I would go to um, before looking at my map is my local mall. I would head to my local mall and see what they have, um, see what I can find. You know, I have four girls, as you guys know, and a granddaughter and a stepson. So one boy, four girls, well, five girls now for my grandbaby. Okay. So, I will head to the mall. Now, after I head to the mall, believe it or not, I will head to G 
Joanne's and Michael's. And why is because my kids like arts and crafts stuff. And Joanne's and Michael have arts and crafts stuff. So, but sometimes they have other stuff too, like games and things like that for kids. So, don't knock out jo Joanne's and Michael's if you are not a crafter, even though you should definitely be a crafter. I really endorse crafting. Okay, because it's good for your mind, it's good for your soul, and it's, it's, it really helps with your mental stability to create. Okay, even if it's nothing but a doodle, a doodle pad, and you're just doodling, it's really, really helpful to create. Now, the gifts I'm wrapping right now are children's gifts, so they don't have to be extra super neat. Um, I mean, they're neat, but they don't have to be perfect. My kids don't care; they're gonna tear this thing right on up. All right, so, so that would be the next place I would go. It would be my local mall. After I hit the mall up. The next spot I would go would be to, wait, no, wait, scrape, scrape, go back. Before I head to the mall, I'm going to the mall outlet, okay? Now, we've got one in Cabazon, and we've got one in um, somewhere, somewhere going south. There's two of them. I would head there first. So, that would be my next place to go before I go to the mall. After going to the Cabazon outlet, and that's just like a store that has like all the outlet stuff for like the major brands. Um, everything from Oshkosh, Bagosh, and Dale's, you name it. It's there. Gucci, all that. So I would go there next. Now, after I hit up that spot and then the mall, the next place I would go um, if I had more things to buy. Uh, oh, I did, did I mention Nordstrom Racks? I would go to Nordstrom Racks as well. That's right up there with the Cabazon um, Outlet Mall. Okay? So the Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack too, if it's available in your area. After that, and you notice I'm going from the lowest price up, right? Now, some stores, certain things you just can't get unless you um, go to certain places to get it. So, I did not feel like driving to San Diego today, <laughs> nor do I want to in the next week or so. So, I went online onto Nordstrom's, and I can tell you what I got, honey, because he already knows because he told me what he wanted. And I had to order him his Creed Aventus. Um online so i ordered that and i'm gonna pick it up at the local nordstrom rack so um that would be nice i don't have to actually go in to do that while you running around after swap meets head to the dollar tree to get some you know wrapping papers and all that other stuff you might need that would be the next thing to do so that's the order i do it in I go swap meets, okay? I'll go there first to see what I can find that's new. After that, I will hit up the Burlington's, the Ross, the Home, well, the Home Goods is the next one up. So the Burlington's and the Ross. After that, I will hit up the Home Goods, the TJ Maxx, the Marshalls. I will hit up um, Tuesday morning if there's one in your area. Um, from there, I will go to Target's, Walmart's, Big Lots. From there, Nordstrom Wraps, uh, rack, uh, outlet malls, Cabazon, then the mall. From there, after the mall, then I will head to my specialty stores. Like in my case, like I said, I'm buying my husband some Creed Cologne and they only have it at certain places. So I went online and have them getting it from there. And then after that, I start my online shopping. Now here's why I start my online shopping after I do all of that. Okay. At least the footwork of some of that. Um, because when I start my online shopping, especially if the product's going to come in a day or two, I want to be here when my product gets here. I'm not waiting around for the porch pirates to come and rob me. I'm not. And I, it's been going on a lot. I'm sure you guys hear it in the news. I'm sure you see it on, um, what is it called? Ring doorbell news. This is this, this, this um, site on YouTube where it's like ring doorbell news where you can go and you can watch people post crazy stuff that happened on their porch from their ring doorbell, okay? It's hilarious and sad, but check it out when you have time. But I don't want anyone to steal my things. And so I order all, I go and shop and get all the things I need first before I order that way, or vice versa, I do it the other way. I'll order my stuff first, wait for it to come, and then after I've gathered it, then I'll go out and shop. My whole point is I don't want to miss the window of when it's being delivered because I don't want it to be sitting on the porch. My house, you can just see my porch right from the street. Any and everybody can just walk up and just take something to keep going. So I really want to make sure that I am present and available when my things are here and arrive. Okay. So that's why I do it that way. But 
I did the shopping this way this time. Um, I went to the stores first. And now that I'm pretty much done with all my store stuff, my next move will be to um, go ahead and start ordering things online. So that's what I'll do next. But I think I pretty much shop for everybody that I wanted to shop for this year. Pretty much. I mean, there's like, mm, there's a few things that I still need to get. But for the most part, I think I've done pretty good this year already. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Pat my own self on the back. So um, I also thought I'd take this time to share with you guys my favorite, my most memorable Christmas. My most memorable Christmas. Well, one of my most memorable Christmases. Now, let me say this. I don't know what other way how else to say it, but to say it, I got the best mama. <laughs> I have the best mama, hands down. Everyone thinks their mama is the best, but yes, I think my mama is the best. And I'm going to tell you why. My mom will go through hell and high waters. She will carry a Christmas tree on her back if need be to get her babies what they want for Christmas. Love you, mom, because I know you watch my videos. I love you. Thank you. And my mother always made sure, regardless of what our financial situation was, she always made sure we had plenty for Christmas. Plenty. My mom was one of those moms to start saving in January for Christmas. I mean, that literally, like, you'll see a little ball of little money on the dresser. She didn't have kids that still, so she could leave her money on the dresser. And through the, through the year, it was just accumulate. And we already knew what it was for. We know, oh, that's Christmas money. Okay? She didn't do that, oh, Christmas is here. I'm sorry, I don't have no money, so y'all ain't getting nothing. We wasn't doing that. You got to prepare for things, okay? So all year, she would prepare. Now, let me tell you what we get in one, in one Christmas. And I'm not exaggerating. This was in one Christmas. Some of it, okay? The latest game system, whatever that was, okay? Bikes. Microwaves for our rooms, okay? I would get a refrigerator for my room. Uh, record players. I'm aging myself, but record player with the tape <coughs> and the radio and the record player on top. You know, the whole kit and caboodle with speakers. Uh, remote control TV. Again, I'm aging myself, okay? Color remote control TV in our rooms, okay? This is one Christmas. Skates, bikes. Uh, you name it, you name it, everything from dolls to real baby food to real pampers for the baby. My mother is the one and the reason why I do Christmas the way I do. My mother, and I did call her mother back then. We didn't call her mama until we got older. We actually started calling her miss and ma'am. But my mother always made sure she came through for us, always. The Christmas tree would... The gifts would be, it would, it would take us probably like two hours to open all our gifts. To open them all, look at them all, throw all the paper away and all that. Like two hours. We'd just be there. We'd just get tired of opening gifts after a while. I mean, it would get so ridiculous sometimes where she would just say, like maybe six or seven days before Christmas. Here, open a gift. Pick, she'd give us, you know, from where we can pick. Pick this, this, or this, and open this. And so, that's what we would do. We would get to pick certain ones to open, like maybe eight, nine days before Christmas because we were like super anxious and couldn't wait, right? We were just like, we were those kids that were like, ooh, 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 right? So she would allow us to open a gift each day before Christmas and not not like a stocking stuffer, not the ones that send the little stockings, that we already had that, not um, like the little box thing, no, like a gift from under the tree, like all kind of gifts. So we would open up a gift pretty much every day for, I'd say, a week two weeks almost leading up to Christmas sometimes, a week and a half, I'd say. And then on Christmas morning, we still had so many gifts to open. It was ridiculous. And I loved it. And it was magical. And it was whimsical. And it was wonderful. And it was so selfless of her to do it. It was so selfless of her to do it because she didn't have to do it. She could have did like most of the mothers around where we lived at the time and just get one or two. Not saying that they couldn't afford it because I'm sure that's going to come into play. Like, well, maybe they couldn't afford more than that. No, because I've seen them with what they wanted. I seen they had their hair, nails, toes did, and new purses and new clothes and this and that. And they man bringing them this and this and that. Okay? So, and now that I've been a mother for 20 odd something years, 23 years, dang near. Uh, you know what you can do and what you can't. And you know when you see other mothers with certain things, what the real deal is. So, 
Some others are just selfish. They're selfish, and if they didn't have it, they feel, oh, well, you, I didn't have it, so you don't need it. Or they're too lazy to try to put in the extra work, or they, they, they just don't know the importance. And it's not about receiving gifts. It's the thought. It really is the thought. Because there was also times when we had a hard time sometimes, and she would say, hey, baby, mommy was only able to get you these 10 toys. Still 10 toys, right? And it wasn't like big stuff, but it was still something that we wanted, something we cherished, something that we valued. And it really didn't matter what she gave us. We were always very grateful and we were very good with our toys. We took very good care of our toys. We weren't those kids that tore up our stuff. Our stuff, I still got some of my dolls up there. Um, we didn't tear up our things. So I think that kind of made it a little easier for her too, is that she knew that if she bought us something of value, we would care for it properly. Okay, so that's big. Um, we're still wrapping. Dang, I only wrapped a couple. I feel like I've been here all day. All right, so my mom would go all out of her way to make sure hmm, that... I don't know that one. Alexa, I'm not talking to you. Sorry. I thought I heard my name. No, you didn't. You see, all in my business. Girl, get out of my business. Let me push the button. It's still about my conversation. All in our conversation. So anyhow, she would go out of her way to make sure that we had what we wanted. And if we didn't have what we wanted, we kind of had what we wanted. And if she couldn't do that, there was some explaining. There was a baby, I can't do it right now. But as soon as mama get this, this, or this, then I promise you I'm going to get you this. And I feel like that was important because when you grow up, and, and this is not something, this is not something I can, I'm not. I can't relate <laughs> to this because, again, my mom was really big on making sure that we had things. And she gave us an allowance. We had a $20 allowance each month. And, you know, and we started getting that at like five, five or six years old. We started getting a $20, $20 allowance. And back then, that was a lot of money <laughs> for a kid, you know. But it made us feel appreciated. It made us feel worth, worth it. You know, we didn't feel like we weren't worth having anything we didn't feel that we needed to steal in order to um have things that we liked um we weren't desperate you know what i'm saying it really does develop something in a child when they know that they they have something that can add value to their life and let's be honest money adds value because money allows you to be able to be you and do what you want to do when you don't have money then that's when you have to constantly do what other people want you to do right and we know that. I mean, some of us got to deal with that tomorrow. We go into work and don't want to be there. So just very important to, um, I feel it's important for my kids to have what they like under the tree. They don't have jobs, so they can't go out and buy it themselves. Um, all they can do is ask their mom and dad. And I don't want my kids to be those kids that end up being jealous of everybody else because everybody has it but them. I'm not saying they got to have the same thing someone else has, but I don't want my kids to become jealous because they never get the opportunity to par partake in certain things, right? So it's very important to me. Sorry, you guys, my lips are so dry. My, this flu has made me like, yeah, dry, dry. It feels like I'm super dry. And then the shower and me washing my face didn't help. But anyhow, um, I want my kids to know that they're valued. I want them to know that I appreciate them. I want them to know that it's okay to want things in life. It's okay to ask for things. Um, and then, you know, when the time comes, they'll learn about the value of working hard to get it, right? Um, you guys know, some of you do, some of you don't. I have two daughters that are on the autism spectrum, and so things in development is a little bit different than the average show. And so um, we're learning, we're getting there, we're learning about value of money the price of things um the value of time <laughs> hard work and all that jazz that's incorporated and corralled into that so we're learning we're getting there but um for now you know i feel it's important to get things for children because let's be honest we never know what kind of life our child is going to have we pray and we ask god to protect our kids we try and show them the best way we know we try to teach them the right things, the morals, principles, values, ethics, responsibilities, all that jazz. We try to incorporate that and teach them how to keep safe and to pay attention to their surroundings and the, the list can go on. But the truth of the matter is, none of us know when we're checking out of this joint. That's the truth. 
And I would hate to be one of those moms looking in the box and looking and saying, well, I did not do everything I can to make this child's life happy. Not saying I'm perfect. Not saying I have all this money. I can just do everything I want for my kids. I understand been a single mom, been a divorced single mom, um, been a mom just having financial hardships. I get it. You can't always get everything your kid wants, especially nowadays because things cost so much money. I understand that. But I definitely would not want that thought on my mind that I could have done. I know. I know that I could have done better as a parent in the sense of I could have provided more love, more stability, more comfort, more peace, more joy, more good times, more good memories. You know, all parents, you know, we all have our downfalls. We all have our shortcomings. We know that we're human. But to the best of my freaking ability, before I leave this earth, if God allow me, I'm trying to be the best ma mom I possibly can be to my kids. Now, whether they appreciate it later or leave me in the nursing home, <laughs> hey, it's up for debate. But I don't want to close my eyes without knowing that I try to be the best I can be. And yeah, that goes down to, you know, my baby really wants this doll or my baby really wants this or that. You know, because what you're really doing is you're training them. You're training them to, 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 to know that it's okay to want things. And then later on when they learn the, the value of stuff, it's okay to want things and work hard to get it. Right? But if they never get to have nothing, they never get to have nothing, then why would they want to work hard for anything? Why would they want to? If they if they develop a culture of never having, then they, they're not going to even feel motivated to try and um, do anything different. In my opinion, I mean, we see it all the time in our, our communities where people are like, what's the point? And it's because they've never had that taste of satisfaction quenched. They've never got to actually hold and touch and have something they really, really wanted. You know what I'm saying? That desire has got to be pleased eventually in some type of way. Let them touch it, see it, taste it, something. Otherwise... They're going to become bitter and angry. Bitter, angry, and resentful. And you don't want that. And this is not about Chris, again, about the toys. And it's just about things in life. Just life, man. Because life, you know, can be a nuisance and a hardship at times. But what do we do here on the Wrapped and Scratch panel? We repurpose, recycle, and reuse all parts of our life. So we're trying to make the best of what we got, right? But that doesn't mean it's easy. Doesn't mean it's easy. All right. Let's keep on wrapping. Well, I'm going to keep on wrapping. And I'll show you guys everything I wrap tomorrow on the next vlog. Okay? I'm not going to keep y'all all night. But thank you for stopping in with me. Thank you for chit-chatting with me. Thank you for helping me wrap some of these gifts. And remember to stay wrapped in scratch. Remember to stay loving you. Stay loving God. Stay loving the light. And I will see y'all tomorrow in Vlogmas Day 9. Bye, guys.